And the word of God says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Somebody say peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, the, these beatitudes, Lord God. Thank you for the, just the wisdom that's in it, Lord God. We ask that you would just have your way on tonight, Father God. Bless this word. I ask that it would be potent, Lord God, and it would also edify the body of Christ. I ask that I would, my flesh would sit down, Lord God, and, and your spirit would rise up, Lord God. Take hold and control of this vessel, Lord God. Have your way tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, all right. Brothers, thank y'all so much, man. Thank y'all. Hallelujah. Awesome worship team, awesome worship band, y'all. All right, all right. So we're coming out of the book of Matthew tonight, you guys. Matthew 5, 3 through 11. And we're talking about the Beatitudes. And the times I've been coming up here, man, we, we've been in a series, right? And just talking about the Beatitudes. And so I'm just going to do a, a recap because we have, we've made some, 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 some headway uh, in the Beatitudes. So I just kind of got to run back on what we've discussed so far. So the things that we've learned, number one, y'all, Jesus preaches what is called the Sermon on the Mount. All right. In verse one in Matthew, it says, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying, and this is here where we have the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Number two, we also learned that there are nine Beatitudes. There's nine Beatitudes that Jesus speaks that is recorded here in Matthew. Number three, why is it called a Beatitude? Each verse, y'all, begins with the word blessed are. Say blessed, blessed. are. Now, in the Latin, that means bente sum, or in the Greek, blessed is the word makarios. Say it with me, makarios. And that word means a couple of things. It means happy or happier, fortunate, well off. And one of the ones I like the most, supremely blessed. Amen. You know you're supremely blessed. Supremely blessed. We got to speak that on one another. You are supremely blessed. So when we do these beatitudes, God is saying, you're going to be fortunate. You're going to be well off. You're going to be supremely blessed when we follow these beatitudes. Number four, we also learn, y'all, that even in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 28 is similar to a beatitude. It's the blessings and the curses. And they all were declared by Yah himself. And he says, blessed shall, blessed shall, blessed shall. Verse three, it says, blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. That blessing is for you, Israel. The Lord is talking about us, man. When we follow him, these blessings shall come upon us. So there's not only beatitudes in the new, but there's also beatitudes in the old. Number five, a beatitude, y'all, we said it's an attitude of the kingdom. An attitude of the kingdom. Now, we know in the world we live in, y'all, 
Some people got bad attitudes and some people got good attitudes, right? Sometimes we can have a fleshly attitude and other times we have a godly attitude. Other days it's a worldly attitude or there's a kingdom attitude. Now, I thought about it. There could be two people. One person, that one person does the best work. When, they, when that person does it, it's, it's good, it's great. But they got a bad attitude when they do it, though. And then you might have another person. Now, they work not, not, not be all, all the way. It just be okay. But they got a good attitude about it. When, when they come to work, they just, this is a joy to be around. So attitude matters. Now, the goal would be in that situation, we want to be we want to do the best work and have the best attitude about it. Let's just do both. That's what God wants us to be. We got to have a good attitude. Right now. Beatitude number one, we had talked about blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We learned that to be poor in spirit does not refer to your bank account balance. Amen. It does not refer to your outward condition. It's not about what's going on on the outside. The poor in spirit is referring to our inward life, y'all, our inner condition. You can be rich outwardly. You can be rich outwardly, but poor spiritually. Your bank accounts can be full, y'all, but your spiritual accounts can be totally empty. And many people out there that don't have the Lord spiritually, they empty. Your belly can be filled with delicious, luxurious delicacies, but your soul, your soul, empty, malnourished, starving. And we learn that the world out there right now is starving out there. They can't get full. They doing this, buying that, being part of this thing and that. They ain't got nothing to do with God, and they're wondering why they still feel empty. They make it all the way to the top. They become number one. And find out it was, they still feel empty because they did it without God. They did it without God. But for those who have Jesus, whatever their outward state may be, are in their inward life rich spiritually because of their connection with Yah. It's because of that connection. Those that have Jesus know without God. They nothing. Amen. Without God, we nothing. So you could say it like this. Blessed are those that know without God, they nothing. Amen. They nothing. Without God, there is no me. But with God, we alive. We alive. Beatitude number two, y'all. Blessed are they that mourn, we talked about, for they shall be comforted. We have learned that to mourn is to lament on, to grieve, to bewail, to feel guilt. And usually when we think about the word mourning, we, we kind of, at least for me, I thought about it, I'm thinking about a funeral. I'm thinking about somebody that may have passed away. You're, you're mourning the loss of someone. Well, the scripture we learned that is not discussing about somebody passing away. It's not a uh, uh, mourning of someone passing away, but it's to mourn upon your own sin. Yeah. To mourn our own sin. And then it goes even a little bit deeper. We learn that it's not mourning for the consequences of sin. Because sometimes we could sin and just feel bad for the consequence that took place. You know what I'm saying? We caught up in, in the trouble that it caused and we forget about the actual action itself. It's not the mourning for the consequences of sin, but over the sin itself and how it has stained the soul. How it has made us dirty in the sight of God. And when we recognize our sin, when we say, you know what, that, that, this, this, is, this, is, this is a struggle. God, I... Again, God, I don't want to do that, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Oh, wretched man that I am, deliver me, Lord, from this body, from this flesh, man. It, it don't want to act right, Lord. Help me. When we get that, that response, that mourning response to the sin that we've done, 
Guess who comes in? We learn that the comforter comes in, which is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit comes through and says, my child, my daughter, look, you're not all right, like Pastor been saying, but you're not all wrong. Go ahead, get up, dust it off. Get back up, come back to church. Get back in your word, worship again. Keep going. All is not lost. He still love you. He gonna continue to love you. He's not gonna give up on you. Beatitude number three. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek. We talked about the meek. And sometimes we think that with that word meek, just automatically we think that that might mean somebody that might be timid or might be a little quiet or might be a little shy. But we learned that that's not what meek is. Meek is a mildness of disposition, a gentleness of spirit. Also, the fact or a condition of being, we learn, of being submissive. Submissive. That's meek. Meekness toward God is the disposition of spirit, the position of our heart in which we accept his dealings with us as good and therefore without disputing or resisting. That's meekness. When we accept, okay, God, that's your plan, God. I, 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 I don't understand it all the way, but I'm going to trust you. Lord, this don't even feel good, Lord, but I'm going to trust you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to resist, but my flesh wants to resist, but your spirit is willing, and I know your spirit is in me, so I'm going to just trust you on this situation. That's what he wants us to do. That's meekness. It's not timidness. It's not being quiet. It's not being shy. It's actually submissiveness is meekness. Moses, we learned that the Bible says Moses was very meek above all men, <clears throat> above all men upon the face of the earth. He was a meek man. Not a quiet man, not a timid man. No, no, no. He was submitted to God. And look all what Moses did. Look all what he did for the Lord. Moses was meek. And we learn also Jesus himself. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek. And we know that Jesus submitted to God all the way to the cross, man. I remember in, 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 in the garden of Gethsemane, sweat and blood, man. Lord, pass this cup. I, I don't, I, he's knowing what he's about to go through. But Lord, not my will, your will be done. Meekness. Meekness is submissiveness. Amen? Amen. 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 Beatitude number four, y'all. Moving on. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger, y'all, we said was to suffer want, to be needy, to crave ardently. You know what a hunger pain feel like. You know, you know what it's like to be hungry, right? Especially when it's during the fast, you know what it, what it feel like to be hungry, all right? And then there's also a thirst. Thirst, we said, was to painfully feel their want of eagerly long for by those things that only the soul can be refreshed by. Now, one thing, if you look at it in the physical, you could be hungry for a while, for a good while. But that thirst, you could only, your body, your human body could only go so long without water. You can go pretty long without food, but that water. So God is, is, is he's taking a, a step with us. Those that hunger, blessed are those that hunger first, and then there, so it's even a more eagerness, right? It's a more of a pull. A pull for what? A longing after righteousness. A longing after righteousness. The longing was the hunger and thirst to be in a condition that is acceptable to God. What does that, what does that, that, that look like? What does that mean? What does that sound like? That's, that's you taking a, a, an account of you and realizing, man, God, I'm pretty messed up. I, I, I got some ways that, that it's just, it seems like sometimes I just can't get right, Lord. And then you're like, man, what would I look like? What would I be like? 
Where would I go if I, would, if I would just listen to your word, what you would tell me all the time? What it would be like if I was submitted to you in everything, in every way? That's the longing. Man, Lord, I, I, I wish I had it all together, Lord. How, will, how much will we be? How far will we go? Where God would take us, man, if we just obeyed him like 100%. Now, look, that's, all, that's, that's some big shoes to fill. Those, those sound like Jesus' shoes. You know what I'm saying? But he is living in us. And his grace is sufficient. So we got to trust him, man. We got to trust them. That's that longing. That's that hunger to be acceptable to God, man. To long to be who you ought to be. Do you know who you ought to be? Do you know what God has for you, what God has inside of you? He got blessings for you. He got favor for you. He got a plan for your life strategically made. He did not come down there and suffer and die on a cross for nothing. No, 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 no. He, he, he did it for a purpose, man. He, he is precious. And he gave up himself for you. He has something inside of you that's, that's great, y'all. You long to act how you know you should act. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just don't act right. Sometimes we just don't act right. We don't think right. We don't feel right. We, the, the mind will just be playing tricks on us, man. You know what I'm saying? Those the, them dogs just coming like, man, I'm not even trying to think about that, Lord. We long to be right. When you know yourself, do you know yourself? Do you know yourself? See, who you are alone, that's you. When you're by yourself, that's you. Is, 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 is the you that nobody else see. Nobody else see. But God see. And look how merciful he is, despite of what he see. This, in spite of what he know. He still wakes us up every morning, man. He still got breath in our lives, man. He's still putting food on our tables, man. He's still keeping our families, man. He blessing us with things, y'all. He's good. That's why we say he's a good, good father. That's why we shout that. That's why we worship him. That's why we praise that. Because he's really good when we know ourselves. We also learn in Beatitude number five, man, we talked about the merciful. We talked about the merciful, for they shall, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That mercy is good, man. That, that mercy kind of gives me kind of excited because when you really begin to think about, man, that mercy is, y'all, that mercy is to not receive what you actually deserve. Do you know what you deserve? Do we know what we really deserve? Like I said, when you got to know yourself, I don't deserve to be up here. I don't deserve a family. I don't be, deserve to be in my, my, my right mind right now. I don't. I don't deserve, don't deserve to have a home. I don't deserve to have money in a bank. I don't deserve to walk on two legs and everything is working. I don't, really don't deserve that. Mercy. And then on the other side, you got grace. So mercy, mercy is... God holding back all the things that you actually deserve. That's mercy. He, 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 there's a door of, of, of wrath that, and, 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 and calamity that's supposed to be coming at you. But God is, res, is resisting that door. That's mercy holding that door. So while at the same time, he's holding this door on this side, the door of grace. He's opening that door of grace, favor, blessing, healing, salvation. Mercy, grace. No, more, no motive to mercy is so constraining as the feeling that we ourselves need it and have found it. When you get it, you, 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 you're, you're, when you understand the mercy that you've been given, we give mercy back to those we know who need mercy because we know we also still need mercy. That's why it says, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. When you're merciful, you get mercy back. We had discussed about the wicked servant. Do y'all remember that the wicked servant, that ball was tripping, man. That ball had been forgiven so much debt, so much debt. Wiped clean slate. Clean slate. To him himself, someone coming to him for mercy, 
You put him in jail and did not show him mercy. And God looked at that and said, that's wicked. So when we don't extend mercy, when we don't extend grace, we don't, you know, let that go. Let, let, let's let that pass. Because God, God, God let that pass for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Beatitude number six, last time, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We had discussed the word pure, right? We talked about uh, reminding us of, of, of children, because children are pure. They're not touched, they're not, they, they, they got a pure mind, they, 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 they clean, they, they, it's, it's amazing. We, and we talked about our childhoods, and we learned that pure and, or purity had three sub-meanings. We talked about the physical meaning, which was clean or purified. There was a Levitical meaning, and we got that out of the book of Leviticus, laws that were given of clean and unclean based upon the instructions given in the book of the law, right? And we talked about an ethical meaning, moral principles or behavior. That's what we had talked about last time. And now we're rolling through the Beatitudes, because remember, there's nine of them, and tonight we're on number seven, man. So we're we, we, we covering them all. We're getting it through, man. So tonight we're going to talk about Beatitude number seven. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Somebody say peacemakers. Peacemakers. Y'all... We need peacemakers in the world today. Yes, we need peacemakers. And it's just so, you know, we, 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 the, the ministers and the deacons, as, as we teach, you know, we're on a schedule. You know what I'm saying? And y'all see, I'm just following scripture, by, you know what I'm saying? And it's amazing how things just, you know, things happen and it, it fits into the word for everybody that come up here and teach. But it's the spirit of God. You know what I'm saying? And God is in control. He's in control of all of us. Like, it's just, it's a wonderful thing, man. So, to have this timely scripture in the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We, we need it so badly today. And there's so much things going on in the world right now, and I know we all see it. It's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's some very interesting and, 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 and trying. And, and God, we need wisdom today, big time, especially for the Hebrews. Because th things are, are, are shaking. Things are shaking. We, 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 a, a, a couple of weekends ago, we, we witnessed almost, we almost witnessed an assassination attempt on a former president of the free world yes, sir. on live TV, on live TV. Now, and I believe Pastor would, 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 would say the same thing, and that's why I'll say it, you know, we're not wishing death on nobody. That's not how we roll. As a people, us, we done been through too much already. You understand? We don't want to see nobody hurt. That's not our heart. You know what I'm saying? That's not our heart. We don't want to see nobody hurt. That no, nah, we not, we not, that's not, that's not us. How they got the little song they got right now? No, no. But that right there, that's not us. That ain't us. All right. But what I what, what I, I will say is, man, we need peacemakers. I'm not talking about red, blue, black, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. All in all. We need peacemakers. We need the children of God to stand up because we live in a country, it's called the United States, but it sure does not feel united. It's not united at all. You might as well call it the divided states of America. We could call it that. And the thing is, I see with that, as Hebrews, we've been scattered and we've been placed in this country on purpose. It hurt though. But we see the sovereign hand of God in it all the way, all day. And praise God for Pastor Omar of this house for revealing that to us. We Hebrews, and we represent the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in our bloodline, it's us. 
We are the jewels hidden in America. And we got this thing going on right now. But if we look at us, I want to look at us as a people. Because we can look at them, but I want to look at us as a people. We not united. We not united. We divided on every area, where there's it, it's church, where there's politics, where there's about a sports football game. It, it, we divided, we, 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 we just, we always divided. Now I wonder, I wonder if we, the Hebrews, if we get united. But the only way for us to get united is for every Hebrew to be reunited to Yah. That's the only way. The Hebrew gots to get reunited to God, man, collectively. Not just here. I'm talking about everywhere. In every state we in, we all know who we are, whose we are, and who the king is. When we get united, it's going it's to it's it's have to get correct. It's going to have to get correct. Will the peacemakers please stand up? Stand up. We got to stand up. And Pastor talked about this Sunday about how us Hebrews we tend to choose. We, choose, we tend to choose wrong. We tend to choose wrong. And I like how he brought about, about Moses. You know what I'm saying? God spoke to Moses for a reason. That's who he chose. And sometimes we don't like who God chose. We got something to say about who God chose, but God, ain't he God? No, wait a minute. I thought he was God. Don't it belong to him? Ain't the earth, the laws and the fullness thereof, it belongs to him, so he do what he want to do with it. It's his chessboard. It's not a checkerboard. It's a chessboard. And he moved the pawn. He's he, he moving kings. He's doing things. I'm going to tell y'all, church, he, the pastor of this house, He'd pass the Omar what he's saying, prophetic, what he, prophetically what he says from this pulpit. I done seen countless times that man stand up here, say something, and I see it happen out there. Yes. Uh, show up on my phone. Yes, I, I, I could count more times on my hand. It, 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 it didn't, we didn't see it, we didn't witness it. Amen. Follow our leader. As he follows Christ, follow the leader. Yes. Follow our leader is going to be very important. Some things we might not even understand or comprehend, but you're going to have to trust God. They have to trust Moses. Now, Moses, think about it. Moses went up to the mountain yeah. to receive something from God. When you're on a mountain, you're on a high elevation. Now, all Israel, all at the bottom, they only could see from one level. But when Moses was on top of the mountain, that wasn't just a physical thing. He was able to see some things. The same thing for our, the bishop of this house. The same thing for Pastor Omar. That man sees from another level, man. Don't we kid? Let's not think that, that I know, you know, we were used to him and we've been around him for so long, you know what I'm saying? And we could make things common. And, and, but we got to fight that, though. We got we to not, not let that take over us and still understand we live in a, in, in, a, in a Moses type of time, in a prophetic type of time. And, the Hebrews need a leader, man. That, it, that's what we need, man. We need a leader. We need somebody to follow. Will the peacemakers please stand up? Now, let's talk about the word peacemaker. The word peacemaker. Y'all, that word peacemaker, y'all, it means loving peace. I was like, wow. It means loving peace. The peacemaker loves to see peace. They want to see, they, they, they want to see things to be at peace. But do you know that some people just don't like peace? Some people, they, 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 it's like whenever it's calm, they just they got to stir something up. They just, it just, it just, they just so used to some people could just be brought up in, in confusion and dismay and you know, upbringings have a lot to do with it. They just used to commotion. You know, somebody that just used to have a commotion in their life is like every time you talk to them, it's something like, man, it was just it was just calm. But now you didn't stir something up for no reason. 
peace. I want to ask you a question. What type of people are you around? What kind of people are around you? Which family member, which coworker, which sibling, which cousin, man? Rather strife than peace. And pastor said it Sunday. The Abrahams are the herdsmen. And I'm going to say the peacemakers are the strife makers. Can you identify them in your life? And are you picking strife makers or peacemakers? Can you discern who's the peacemaker and who's the strife maker? Some people just like that. Some people just like to fight. They just, they just, they just, in them, they just like, like, they just like to fight. Like, man, I was getting my hair retwisted, man. I'm chilling and, you know, uh, washing my hair and everything like that. And, and, and a lady walk in, man, and like, I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm washing my hair, so my eyes closed, but I could hear. You know, ears don't cut off, you know what I'm saying? So, like, she, and this, this woman, she walk in there a minute, we're just like, man, I, uh, man, back in high school, man, I, I used to, them, 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 them guys up, and I'm like, man, that's a woman? Oh. And she just kept like, like she was reminiscing about her times of beating other girls up in high school. You know what I'm saying? And like she was kind of like, like, like embraced, like she got excited about it, like, because she was about that life. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, man, how old are you right now? Why that sound so good to you? Like, like to fight, like, you know what I'm saying? Now I understand some situations does call for us to fight. I get that. But to like, Really, like, like you, you just find total joy in just knocking somebody out. Like, man, whoo, calm down, girl. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Now, I got to balance it out when I say peacemaker means love and peace, and peacemaker, a peacemaker loves to see peace. I have to balance it out because we want to be a lover of peace, right? But I'm not talking about the 70s peace. You remember that whole seven is moving and, and they, 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 they hugging trees and smoking trees because they just, they just love everybody and all that. No, that's not, no. You see how we could take stuff and just go way all the way left field with it like, whoa, slow down. Yes, love, but not, not, not that far. But the Lord, y'all, he, he is about balance because the same Bible that talks about peace also talks about war. In the Old Testament, there's a time for everything under the sun. A time for peace and a time for war. A time to embrace and a time to pull away. During David's time, y'all, David, he had to fight a lot, man. He had to fight a lot. He was, he's fighting animals. You know what I'm saying? After he fighting the animals, now, now, now he get in there. Now he got, he got a, he, he, don't, he don't get in there yet as far as the kingdom, but then the person he under trying to fight him. So now he got to run away, you know, fighting. Then, then he get the kingdom, but then he got to keep on fighting for the kingdom. And then we have that inevitable thing that he fell with Bathsheba. And I think that's what made things a bit worse for David. But look, God loved David, though. That's a man after a man after a guy's own heart. The Lord still loved him, but he had a lot of trouble. There was a lot of war in his life. You know what I'm saying? But then you come back, and now Solomon ruling, and Solomon got peace. He made peace all around him. Now, he shut some people down, but after he shut them down, like he was peace after nobody played with him no more. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was running up to Solomon. No, they saw the wisdom that man had. Amen. They saw his land. They saw how he operated. It was like, don't touch him. He'll he, he outsmart you or something. Watch out. So there's a balance. There's a balance. Now, I want to look at the same scripture in Matthew 5, 9 in the NLT. In the NLT. It says... God blesses those who work for peace. God blesses those who work for peace. Those who work for peace, God will bless. It takes work. It takes work to have peace. And one of the areas, especially in relationships, one of the things to work is counseling. Counsel. In a multitude of counselors, there is safety, there is wisdom. But why is it that our people, and why is it that not only our people, I'm going to even say it, our men, why are we cowards to get counseling? 
The Lord told me to say coward because I actually I was writing it and I was going to say we're scared to get counsel. The Holy Spirit stopped and said, don't say coward. Say they coward to get counsel. Because if you say scared, they're not going to. But if I say, if I say coward, you're going to feel something. That you're going you're gonna to feel some little pride. Yeah, yeah. Now, and the Lord wants you to feel that because he wants you to come up. He wants you to come up. Let somebody in, man. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody, man. You have to. You have to. See that brother right there? Deacon Chavis on that camera on camera three right there? Oh, yeah, yeah, him right there. Y'all y'all see him? Y'all see him? That's a good brother right there. That brother right there? I done called him up many a times. Talk to me and my wife. You know what I'm saying? He real. The brothers, we got brothers here, man. Minister Sam, Deaconess Leola. They done helped us numerous times. I praise God for them. You understand what I'm saying? That's what they, that, look, get counseling. And, and one thing, the, the, the tendency of, oh man, you know, I don't want nobody in my business. That's why you got confused. Because you, you're, you're doing it on your own, you're seeing it just one way. You got to let a third party come in. Oh, I'm just waiting for the Lord to do it. God use people, man. God used people. He is a spirit, right? And his spirit lives within people. His spirit don't just, it's not just like in the, it's just, just like just in weird place. It's just, no, it's inside of people. You understand what I'm saying? That's how God operates, man. He uses people. Let people help you. Talk to somebody, man. Say something. Let somebody in, man. If you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself a believer, you call yourself a follower of Christ, that means you're a peacemaker. You're a child of God. And you got to work to make peace. So whatever it takes, get the counseling, man. Get the counseling. Another thing we run from, oh, man, they're going, man, they're just going to just take her side because they know it. They're just going to just take that one side. Let me tell you something. That one and them two right there. Bow. Right down the middle. They're not on my side. They're not on her side. They're on the Lord's side. They're going to just say what does say the Lord. And you're going to hear from another perspective, man, because sometimes we see things just one way. And they always got, they say they got, they got two sides to the story. They got that side, this side, but there's another side. What the Lord see. Right? Counseling. Counseling. It's so important. We are supposed to work for peace. Romans 12, 18. This Romans 12, 18, this is a conditional scripture. It's a scripture with some conditions. The first one off the, off the top, it say, if it be possible. Now, because it says if, that's a condition already. That if is already insinuating that sometimes it might not be. That's why I say if. If it be possible. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. It said all. Yes. It just didn't say the ones you like. Yep. It just didn't say this person, that person, this particular group, that particular group. It says live peaceably with all men. That's what we call to do. We peacemakers. We are peacemakers. Romans 12, 18. Again, I want to look at it now in the NIV. In the NIV, if it is if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I underline as far as it depends on you, because that's why they got that if in it. Because some people sometimes you just can't make you're not gonna be you're not gonna be able to make peace with them because they're not trying to cooperate, and those that that happens. But when it, everything on your part though. Be blameless. Yes. Everything that, that is concerning about you, all, all the, the, as far as it depends on you, you do your best you can to make peace, yes. to talk, to communicate, to, to, to yes. try to get the session. Try, try. On, when, if it's on you, let, 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 it, let the fault not be on you. That's what it's saying. And then the NLT, it breaks it down even a little bit more. It says, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Amen. Do all that you can. Try. Good, try. But notice, 
If you, if you go back to the King James, you got an if. Because this one says, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. But the fact of the matter is, that if is still there in the other versions that let us know, not all the time it's going to be able to happen. But as long as you've done your part to try your best to bring peace to that situation, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Another caveat, Matthew 5.23 Matthew 5, 23, it says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee. Verse 24. Let's see. It says, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. It says, If you remember that your brother got ought against you. So I thought about that first part. So you, 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 you got your, you, you want to give to the Lord. But you remember, man, I got an ought with him. You got to take care of that ought. Yeah. You got to take care of that ought. Because that, that ought is like a clog. So you might be giving, but you got a clog in the pipe yes, of blessings, man. And it's not, it's not coming through. Yeah. A little bit might come through, but because you got an ought with somebody, you got to take care of the ought. You got to take care of the art. Now notice it says, you know, your brother had against you. That means you did something. Because it's, it's, it's that word against. So you did something. And you might have forgot about it, but it came to your mind. And you come back and you talk to that person and you just, I apologize. My bad. Apologize. On the other hand, also, you know, if you holding an art, and that person might not come and ask for forgiveness, but you're holding that art against somebody else, do you know that could hinder a blessing too? Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. It's both ways, actually. See, we, we don't want to have issues with really anybody as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? We just want we want to be, 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 be have, a, have a clean heart about people, about situations. You know, situations come up because they, like, like Minister uh, uh, Brown was talking about offenses, it's going to come. Yeah. It, it, that's, that's, that's life. That's church life. Offenses going to happen. But it's, it's afterwards. We, we, we got to move on. We, we, we got to keep on going. And we don't want no crazy thoughts about that person in our mind just sitting there because that's distracting what God got for you to be doing. It's taking up too much energy. You know what I'm saying? No. Let those things go. Let those things go. I'm wrapping up, y'all. Look, one more scripture. One more scripture. And man, when I saw this scripture, I was like, man, this is a beautiful scripture. I said, man, this scripture is gorgeous. Check this out. It's Romans 14, 19. And I'm telling you, you might want to write this one down. Romans 14, 19. It says it like this. Let us, therefore, follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify one another. I was like, whoa. Let us, therefore, follow after the things which make for peace. First caveat. On the one hand, follow after things. One thing you first have to do, y'all, you have to stop asking worldly people for advice. Stop getting advice from people on your job that's not a believer. For at least, it's okay if you don't come to this church. That's okay. There's more churches. To, to, you know what I'm saying? There's other believers out there. But one thing for sure, let them be a believer. All right, let them be in the same book you in. Because you get advice from somebody from the world, they're not going to understand. They, they don't have the spirit of God, for one. They can't give you wisdom. They're giving you worldly wisdom. It's not godly wisdom. So please, stop getting advice from people in the world. Family members, nothing, world, nothing wrong with talking to family members. But it, does go, it is going to matter. That person got the law with them, 
and their life is going, is going you, 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 you know, you know, you know, right? So make sure, man, they're about the Lord. Make sure they're on the Lord, they're on the same team as you, because if they're on the other team, you know, they, they ain't going to give you no good advice. They're on the other team. Come on, man. No. Now, it says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. And the question that came to my mind, well, what are some things that can make for peace? How do we make peace? Because I don't want to give this message and don't give you nothing, nothing some, some, some um, actual, uh, uh, what's the word? Applic hallelujah. Thank you for my wife. Applicable things that we could use in our life to produce this making peace, this working for peace. The first thing, number one, effective communication. My wife tells me this all the time. All the time. I laugh about it. But as I think about it, it's, it's really true, man. Effective communication. And we're not always taught effective communication. And we got ways, especially in the Hebrew community, we, we, got, we, just, we just brought up different, a certain way. We, we took after this person, that aunt, that uncle, that daddy, that mom, and we just, you know. We didn't grow up in, in saved households with the majority of us, right? Some of us. I mean, Mr. Phil, I he was blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> But for, you know, the rest of us, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, we didn't always know about effective communication. Well, what is, what is effective communication? It's active listening. That's the first thing. Active listening. And, y'all, and I had to learn this, y'all, and sometimes I had to learn this the hard way. It's active listening, and it's not listening to respond. It's listening to understand. Right? Me, Malvo, and, and me and the wife, you know, we, 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 we discussing something. It's a discussion. It's just a discussion. But in my mind, I am, I am, I'm listening, but I'm preparing, I'm preparing my message. <laughs> I'm preparing what to say next. And that's not fair, because my, all my focus is, bam, bam, my next jab. That ain't, that, that ain't, that's not effective. That's not effective communication. The purpose of the communication is for us to listen to understand what's going on. Understanding builds a house. It, it, it puts it, it sets it in order. You can build upon it. Once you get some understanding, now you can move up to something else now. And the next thing, with understanding. The next thing, respectful speech. Ooh, respectful speech. All right. What that means is, man, don't belittle them. Don't call them out their name. Oh, y'all playing church with me? Like, go, so you ain't, ne you ain't never just, just oh, you, you just, all right, I'm going to just talk about me. Hey, it, it, look, the flesh. This is a flesh. And, and yeah, Respectful speech. We can't just go off. We just, no, 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 bring that back. No, don't let, don't let that old man out. Pull him back. It happens, all right? You get back up again, and we do better next time. All right? But we learn from it, and we say, no, we're not going to belittle. We're not going to name call. We're not going to bring up, uh, uh, we're just not going to just put the person down. Because that does nothing about, the, that has nothing to do with the situation. You just name call it, which is immature. It's showing that you ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> you, you ain't got, you ain't had nothing to come back with. You did, well you did. You had no, you had no concrete, nothing to bring to the table of, 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 of to, to help this situation or to bring better understanding, but it was just a name call. No, you have to have respectful speech. Number two, conflict resolution. Again, it's come, talking about, we have to seek understanding, all right? Try, y'all. Work at it. Try to understand the other person's perspective. Perspective. Perspective is, is like everything. Because I see things a certain way, and nobody else in my shoes. This is just the shoes I've been put in. And I ain't been in your shoes. I ain't been through what you've been through. You know what I'm saying? So you have a certain perspective on life. I may have a certain perspective of life. And, and we all have a why. 
We all have a why and why we do things, why we think a certain way, the way we were brought up, the things that we've been through. It, 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 it made a, a pattern in the mind. It made a pattern in the mind. And we begin to see a little thing crawling back on that pattern. Whoop, defense mode come up. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going down that road. Nope. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Seek, understand, get, get, a, get a, a, a perspective. Look at it from that other person's shoes. Get out of yourself and put yourself in the other person. Put yourself in the other person. This works great when both parties are doing it. It does not work if there's only one side doing it. That's why I said, if it be possible. So that, that, that if it be possible, and that part of says, at all as it depends on you, you be the person to look at it from their side. And you hope and pray, God, please show them how it look like from my side. And then when, it, when we get that, now we got some effective communication happening. We can make what's called common ground. Common ground. Common ground. After that, compromise and negotiate. Let's make a compromise. Let's negotiate. Be willing to give and take to reach a mutually beneficial solution. Because this is what's going on. Situation pop off, one person's like this, another person's like that. And then just by, that I mean, what I'm saying is you're just about you. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You're not trying to give nothing. No, no, no. This, this, no, you're not letting up. So both people, they like this. They're not letting up. But compromise is saying, you know what? Be willing to give and take to reach a, benef a beneficial solution. So that, that's the part is like, okay, then we going we both gonna give a okay. Now, in some cases, sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's like that, but there should be some, there should be some bending. This goes with, 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 with in friendships, in marriages, and in, 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 with, with co-workers, you know what I'm saying? You can apply this to so many, many different areas in your life. And the more, and, and as, as you go from friend, to uh, to coworker and then to relation like it, it it gets more extensive it gets more um, um, it could get more difficult let's just be honest you know what I'm saying but compromising and negotiating the next thing and I'm wrapping it up apologize and forgive yes. acknowledge your mistake and ask for forgiveness. Depending on who you are, could be easier said than done. Some people don't have a problem with asking for forgiveness. Other people, it's pride that, 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 that stops it from happening. So we're going to practice right here, right now. I want you to look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm sorry. Say, I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. I didn't feel that was all right. That was all right. All right, that's what it sound like. Because I don't know about you, that there's some times where, you know, well, I, I'm sorry you feel like that. I'm sorry you feel like that. So you, you're, not, you're not taking responsibility of what, how, what you or what, how you feel. You just, you, you're not. I'm sorry that I did that to you. I, 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 I did that. And sometimes it's hard because we could sound, it, it, it may feel hard because it's like, man, I, I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't want to be the one. But man, we, we all sinners and we all make mistakes. Yeah. And when it comes to that apologizing, we also have to forgive. And that, that takes both sides. You know what I'm saying? Let, 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 let's, let's, we got to forgive. <laughs> Time is short. Things happen so fast, so much. Things are very, very interesting on TV right now. And the clock feel like it's ticking. You know what I'm saying? So let's not let these distractions, man, because all, you know, a lot of the quorums and things are just distractions. You know, to get us off our purpose and off our goal. And one thing when it says apologize and forgive, it made me think about 
when we say we acknowledge our mistake, that reminds me of so much of us acknowledging us and our sin, that we've things that we've done to God. We know we started off the service and we talk about a song, how he went for the 99 and he, he, he went for us and he had this reckless love. And realize that we, we acknowledge our sin, man, because he stepped off of glory and came down for us, but realized that we was doing what we wanted to do. We were sinning against him. Wow, you know what I'm saying? We was doing wrong, but he still saved us. In the midst of while we was doing wrong, he still saw and knew they go come. And the devil the whole time, but look at him, look at him, look how he wilding out, look how he doing this, look how he doing that. The Lord like, but I got, I got that. Amen. My spirit coming. My spirit is going to save them. My spirit is going to put them on the right path. You, That's why it's so important that we just acknowledge our sin. We admit to God, man, look, I'm a sinner. I am. I ain't done right. I see my sin. I see what your word says and what, how I've been living, how I've been rolling. It ain't been right. And then when we believe that, when we believe that Jesus Christ, man, he came, he died, buried, rose again on the third day. We confess out of our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what saves us. And that, my friend, that's what turns you into a peacemaker. Because now you have the spirit of God living inside you. And once you realize the prince of peace that came through and put peace in your life, you want to be peaceable with all everybody else. You just want everybody else to have what you have. Peaceable. Peaceable. Say to God, we can stand up, man. We, 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 we're coming to a close, and we're just going to pray. We're just going to pray. Father God, we thank you tonight, Lord God, for the wisdom of, of your word and the Beatitudes, God, that you've taught us about being peacemakers in our generation, in our homes, in our workplaces. Help us, oh God, to represent you well. Help us to, to, to be a light wherever we go. And let that light radiate so brightly, so strongly with your anointing, Lord God, that when people see how we are able to make peace with people, that they would ask us, what is the hope that's in you? Why you act like that? How did you think no to, 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 to treat this person this way despite what they did to you? God, help us to know these things. And that the world would ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And that we would have the answer to a question. Fill every person tonight with your spirit on tonight, Lord God. Anybody that, that came in that didn't know you on tonight, Lord God, I pray for your presence to be upon them. I ask that you would cover every person, every child of God here tonight, Lord God. Make us peacemakers, God. Strengthen us, Lord God. Help us to have effective communication with our, with our, with our people, Lord God, with our, our wives, our husbands, our, our, our mothers, our fathers, Lord God, our, our family members, Lord God. Help us, God, to just be better, just to be better than we were yesterday. We thank you for tonight, Lord God. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Saints of God, y'all go in peace. Shalom. And have a blessed night. Peacemakers. In Jesus' name.